Autogen new updates. I feel like I've been using this headline every other day now, and this is mainly because the Autogen team keeps on evolving and keeps on improving. I believe this agentic framework is going to be a game changer. It obviously is already has a lot of potential, but things keep on evolving so fast. And I wanted to share with you today a few more crucial updates that can become very valuable in our automations. So first of all, the first update is how to add vision capabilities to models. And basically, at the moment, we used to have we used to be able to use GPT-4 Vision, a multimodal agent that allowed us to add vision abilities to our agents. Now, what the Autogen team has uh, presented or added is a vision capability, which basically allows agents that don't have the inherent visual comprehension, visual abilities to understand what is happening in text. Now, uh, I won't go over all the installation and examples. You can read everything in this blog post because my goal is just to give you a, a very brief update about the new things that are going on in, in the agenting framework of Autogen. But basically what they are doing over here is instead of using a GPT for vision, for example, you can use GPT 3.5, for example, or, or Llama or anything, and then add another layer of LMM, which is going to translate the image using a vision able model, translate the image to text, and then bring it back to the agents that you are using. So for example, you can see, by the way, you can see right here, um, the notebook, which basically is saying, let me make this larger. We can add vision capability to regular conversable agent, even if the agent does not have the multimodal cap capability, such as GPT 3.5, Llama, Orca, or whatever. The vision capability will hook to the conversable agent process last receive message. Basically, it is going to, okay, here it's um, an, a better explanation. Uh, but I actually asked Claude to explain this better, but long story short, instead of using GPT for vision, version, vision, you can use this vision ca capability and the agent will get the description of the image. So let me show you here. So what I said, so basically we can get an agent with no vision capability, but we are using a vision model to translate images to text for him. Is that correct? And basically I will just read what Claude said because it summarizes better than what I'm capable of at the moment. So yes, that is correct. The vision capability class allows you to add vision capabilities to an agent that originally doesn't have the ability to process and understand images. The process is as follow. The conversational agent initially lacks the capability. And by adding the vision capability, you enhance its abilities to handle multimodal content. When the agent receives the messages that include an image, the vision capability inter inter intercepts the message and processes the image using the LLM, LMM. The LLM, LMM client, which is a separate vision model or service, such as, such as OpenAI GPT-4V, takes the image as input and generates textual description or caption for that image. The generated images, image description is then inserted into the message content, effectively translating the visual information into a text format that the agent can understand and process. Then the agent receives the augmented messages, which now include uh, the textual des description of the image. Now, um, basically, as I said, you can enable an agent without native vision capabilities to indirectly, indirectly interrupt, interpret and respond to images. And what are the main benefits of this is, first of all, it, is, it can be more cost effective and also require less computational abilities and 
you can also use specific smaller models with specific um, abilities. Let's say you use a, a coding specific model and give it images. So in the past, let's say you wanted to use star coder, which is a model specifically for coding. It didn't have the ability to understand images. So you had to revert back to using GPT-4V, for example. So in this case, you just take a specific model that has that was trained on specific tasks that at the moment doesn't have image interpretation abilities and you give it these capabilities. And this is very important and very powerful. And as Claude says, ultimately the choice between using a separate vision model and a multimodal model like GPT-4V depends on the specific requirements, resources, and trade-offs of the conversational agents being deployed. Okay, so this is the first, uh, first update. The second update is self-optimizing agents, the agent optimizer. And this is something that the Autogen team have released um, a blog post about a while ago. And I think I covered this in a different video. So basically the agent optimizer is a self-optimizing agent. And what it does, it takes a function, it takes a, a task, it sees what are the results, and based on the results, it can adjust the functions to make it the more precise and in the next iteration, conduct better interpretation or better implementation of the code based on the function. I hope this is clear, but I guess it wasn't clear. So let me just show you an example over here of the notebook. So over here, this is the optimization prompt. So you are a function optimizer. Your task is to maintain a list of functions for the assistant according to the existing function list and conversation history that happens between the assistant and the user. You can perform one of the following four actions to manipulate the function list using the functions you have. First of all, you can revise one existing function using the revise function, remove one existing function, and add one new function. Basically, these are the principles. Let me make this larger. So below, below are the principles that you need to follow for taking these four actions. Revise one existing function. So pay more attention to the failed task and corresponding error information. Based on the error information, if the task has failed, it is going to optimize the function used in this task according to the conversation history if needed. A failed function call can occur due to incorrect input argument, missing arguments, or an incorrect function code implementation. You should focus more on the function code implementation and make it easy to get success function call. Um, next, the ability to remove one existing function, only remove the function that you think is not needed anymore in future tasks, and um, add new function. The added function should be general enough to be used in future tasks. For instance, if you encounter a problem that this function can solve, or one step of it, you can use the generated function directly instead of starting from scratch. The add a new function should solve a higher level question that encompasses the original query and extends the code's functionality to make it more versatile and widely applicable. Replace specific strings of variable names with general variables to enhance the tool's uh, applicability to various queries. So let me go down here. This is a, a short graph showing you exactly what's going on. So the agent has a training set and a requirement based on the response. If it is correct, it is fine with we finish the optimization. If it is incorrect, we are calling the agent optimizer, which does what I just showed you. It can revise functions, it can delete functions, and it can add functions to uh, produce and yield better results. In this um, e example, they are using a, a mathematical um, query or task, and they are trying to solve a task. And you can see over here, the guidelines and the prompt, and I won't bore you with all the 
information and how the code was written, you can take a look in this notebook, which is called Agent Chat Agent Optimizer. And what was interesting is when they use the agent optimizer to iteratively optimize the agents by optimizing the function calls, it was able to yield better results. So this is the success rate. Success rate without agent training was 60% and the success rate with agent training was 90%. And the main thing uh, here is just the fact that we have this ability or this ability was added that the agent can self-correct and we need, I need to test this in other scenarios, obviously, but this isn't the goal of this video, but if we will have the ability to self-correct and optimize functions based on the output and based on the conversation, this could be obviously very valuable. Now, the last thing that I want to share with you, and this isn't exactly an Autogen update, but it is directly related to Autogen. It's an, it's an update relating to LM Studio. And for those of you who don't know, LM Studio is a very um, easy to use and easy to set up tool that allows you to use local models or use lo lo uh, models locally. And what they just added is until now, you could only have one local model simultaneously so not simultaneously you can have only one local model running from now on you can use multiple models in the same time so you just need to come to lm studio and up, uh, update your or install the new version and what you can do here you have this playground which is a new uh, section in lm studio you can download multiple models in this case i downloaded a uh, fee Two and Hermes two Pro Mistral, and I copied the model identifier. And what I did now, I was able to use these two models in an Autogen conversation. So you can see here, like the most simple Autogen conversation. So we have Nina, which is a model that I just inserted. To LM Studio. This is the base URL. This is the API key, and this is the model, which I just copied from the API identifier. We have Philip, which is also from LM Studio. It's a Phi2 model, and I gave them a very simple task. Philip, uh, your name is Philip, and you are a cynical copywriter. Nina, which is the Nus Hermes model. Your name is Nina, and you are a senior copywriter. And then I'm asking Nina to write free ads, short and emotional about why agency owners should use automation services. And I launched this in here, which is the Conda environment, Anaconda environment. And you can see over here, the conversation. So Nina write free ads for me, short and emotional about why agency owners should use automation services. Nina, which is using the new CMS model is providing the answer. Then Philip, which is the Phi2 or Phi2, which is using the Phi2 model, um, wrote something back. It, it seems to be repeating itself, but this is a limitation um, because of the model not uh, of the, because of the ability of LM Studio or, or because or due to Autogen. But the main point, maybe I did something wrong over here, Max Stones. Yes, I, I mean, the chat here, it's not for the conversation. It's more like a request. We can do like this. Anyway, I can obviously, I need obviously to tweak the, this because this is just like the most basic initiation of a chat in Autogen. But the main point of this part of this video is the fact that you can use multi-models, not multi-modal, which multi-modal is more like GPT-4 vision, which you can use also vision and also text. But you can use multi-models in the same session using LM Studio. And this is a huge breakthrough because let's say you want to create 
use agents for a task that involves coding and high level text generation. So now you can assign one agent with star coder, for example, which is a, a model that was trained on code examples and is very powerful with regards to creating better code. And then another agent, which is, can be a text based agent and you can use, for example, Mistral. So you can use specific models in the same conversation and run everything locally. And this is very powerful and very promising. Obviously you need to have, you need to download small models or you need to have a, a very powerful um, machine. But this is absolutely, totally depends on your use case and your capabilities and what you would like to achieve. But this is very exciting for me because as I said, it gives us a lot of power to use two different models in the same um, run or in the same agent agentic conversation. Yes, I guess that's it for today, guys. So we discussed how to add vision capabilities to models that don't have inherent visual capabilities. We dis discussed the self-optimizing agents, which I still want to test and see how they can be relevant in my use cases. And we discussed how we can use the new version of LM Studio in order to use different models in the same conversation. I hope you find this video insightful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Obviously, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, keep on automating.